Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to smelt down some more gold-rich sulfide concentrates, try and get the gold and precious metals out of them. So we've smelted a lot of stuff over the years, but my, my main goal has been to try and refine the smelting process down to make it as easy and simple as possible, and try and get one universal recipe. And so today we're going to be working with these concentrates. These are off one of our shaker tables. This is uh, a lot of sulfides in here. We got iron pyrite, pyrotite, a little bit of chalcopyrite. But this is the stuff that on some of my other videos uh, previously, I've panned the gold out and I've sucked it out with a snuffer bottle and direct cupelled it. And this is all the stuff that was left over. It's got some a little bit of free gold in it. Uh, I'm sure there's some gold that's tied up in the sulfides, either between the crystals or just small little pieces of gold still attached. And you guys have been asking, you know, can you make any money doing this? And, you know, that's that's really kind of a loaded question. It depends on who you ask. But I'm going to try and go through the whole process today, show you how much it costs me and how long it takes. And then you guys get to decide, is it worth my time and effort to smelt these down and recover the gold and silver? The other thing I've been trying to figure out over the years is the best kind of production smelting method. And so today I can't fit all of these concentrates in this crucible and smelt them all at once. So we're going to do kind of a production smelting process where I'm going to take one kilogram of concentrates. This is 800 grams of soda ash and 200 grams of silica sand. We're going to mix these up. We're going to put them in a crucible like this and we're going to smelt them down in the furnace about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1100 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to take this piece of iron bar like this. This is just literally a piece of steel and I'm going to put it in the crucible, and it's going to act as an iron source to help reduce any of the sulfides in there. And then because we have so much soda ash in our flux, it's going to be very basic, very alkaline, uh, and it's going to absorb any of the iron pyrite that's in there uh, into the slag, and then we'll be left with uh, just a metal phase in the bottom of the crucible, a slag phase on top. And I'm going to add uh, about 100 grams of lead to this as a collector metal. And then my plan is, is I'm going to, when I pour, I'll get the lead button in the bottom of the cone mold and I'll remix and pour another charge in the same crucible and I'll just put the lead back in and the lead can collect over and over and over again, enriching that collector metal. So at the end, after our two, three, four smelts, we'll have all the gold in 100 grams of lead rather than using 100 grams of lead each time and then you got four or 500 grams of lead you got to deal with. I already have a crucible that's hot from in the, and it's still in the furnace. So I'm gonna pull that out and use that as our crucible for this first smelt.
during the smelting process, a lot of volume is lost through gas loss and melting. And so as things melt in the crucible, the volume goes way down. And so then I can add more material to the same crucible before it's finished. So by adding more material as it melts, I can effectively increase the volume each crucible can hold. And so I'll only have to do two or three smelts instead of four or five as originally thought.
Okay, here's our last one. Whoop. Oh, look at there. Dang. The lead wasn't solid yet. That's all right, it's all still there. It's just uh, in little bits. Dang, I've warned you, I've, I've warned everybody about that on some of my other videos, but yeah, see it's even still kind of smudgy there. Well, let's get it cleaned up. Well, that was super irritating. So I got most of my lead here. I got a little cupel. I got some in the water there. It was still kind of gooey molten on the side. There's the little tip. I'm waiting for that to cool down. Um, here's the here's the slag. Still almost molten in the middle there because I'm impatient. Uh, but what I did was here's our three different smelts. This is one to one ratio flux to concentrates. I didn't like, this is cool enough. I didn't like the, the look of this. It had a real matte look to it where it looks like there's still a bunch of sulfides in there. So on the next one, I increased the flux by another 50%. So one and a half uh, parts to one of the concentrates. That's still too hot. And so this still looks like it's, you know, it's kind of got that matte look to it. It looks like it's a bunch of sulfides all around the rim there uh, where I broke open the cone. So on this last one, I did two parts flux to one part cons. And it looks better. It looks, I mean, it's still, I don't know, it still kind of looks like that matte finer finer grained but still that that matte sulfide look to it uh, here's the piece with a little bit of lead on it still so I'm gonna wait till that cools down and then I can crush it up and get the rest of my lead but um, so what I'm gonna do is all of our gold and precious metals should be concentrated here in this little bit of lead we have left I did hundred grams and we probably don't have 20 left over after our three smelts but I'm gonna take Probably this one, uh, the one to one, and I'm going to mix uh, two more parts flux with that, and we'll re-smelt it and see if I can get any more precious metals out of there by essentially, you know, diluting it further with flux, um, and that'll tell us, you know, yeah, you've got all the precious metals out at a one to one ratio, or boy, there's still a bunch left in there in this in this mat phase that we made. And you need a higher volume of flux, like a two or three to one ratio to get all your precious metals. So we'll smelt this one down and see if we can get any more precious metals out. And we'll start cupelling this and figure out how much gold we recovered from our total concentrates. And uh, all together, we had uh, 3.1 kilograms of concentrates we smelted down. It took me about a little less than three hours and I used roughly four gallons of propane. I started with a full five gallon bottle and I still have about a gallon left or so. Well, there it is. They usually just lift off with tweezers, yeah. You don't want it stuck to the bottom of that thing. So there's our bead. Let me get it cooled off and we'll weigh it. Well, let's see what we got here. 
All in all, it took me about three and a half hours. It took me about an extra half an hour, 40 minutes to cupel the lead away. So that's in grams, 0.67 grams. So what's that, about 35 or $40? So we're probably not getting rich on that stuff. Here's the stuff we're gonna run through a second time. I'm gonna add 50 grams of lead and I'll put uh, probably two times as much of the same flux recipe as the material I'm gonna put in the crucible. And we'll run that again with more flux, see if we can recover any more precious metals out of that. But then here's the two samples we ran yesterday we're not gonna rerun and I wanted to show you, this stuff hydrates, so it sat out just 24 hours, but it's all broken up and wet and fluffy and um, so all the, the soda ash that we add absorbs the water and the moisture in the air, which we have a lot of, and uh, it hydrates all that stuff. So it just turns into black puffy powder. You can see some here on the, it just, it just kind of crumbles into nothing. And so that's why I kept this stuff in this sealed container here overnight. So it's still all nice and dry. It didn't hydrate from the air. All right, we have 600 grams of our previous material. I'm gonna put it down there in that crucible. Now I'm gonna measure out 1200 grams of flux to add in there as well. And I'm going to add 900 grams of soda ash and 300 grams of silica sand. There we go. Now I'm gonna add 50 grams of lead and we're essentially just doing a, a big assay on this stuff. We're just gonna re-smelt it down, see if we can recover any more precious metals. One thing I will say that I've noticed is the more flux with soda ash you add to the crucible, the more foamy and frothy and it gets. It tends to boil over and you really have to reduce the heat and heat it up very slowly or it will boil over the crucible. On a one-to-one -one ratio of flux to concentrates, it doesn't foam at all, it hardly boils at all, there's no gain in volume, but on a two or three to one ratio of flux to concentrates, it really, really boils and froths and, and is really a problem. So you gotta heat it very, very slowly so it doesn't boil over. Okay, here's our last pour. Hopefully I let it cool down enough so the lead's not all gonna run out of here. There we go. So let's see what we got in here for lead, and then we'll cue pellet away and see if we got any more precious metals. Here's our block of lead. There's what the slag looks like with roughly three times flux to concentrates. And it really doesn't look that much better than the one or one and a half times. So we're really gonna find something out when we deal with this lead. And uh, when we get this cube held away, we'll know if there's a lot of gold here or silver 
or if we got it all the first time. All right, well, here's our little tiny bead we recovered from resmelting. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it is very, very silver color. So I'm going to say it's at least half silver, if not more. And it weighs 0.165 or so, 0.16. Now what I've seen in the past is that when you do have a little bit of the sulfides or mat that doesn't get taken up by the slag, is the silver gets absorbed, but the gold is pretty much left untouched. So I expect that this is mostly silver, if not all silver, and the gold will end up capturing uh, with the lead that we run through all three batches. So at $35 or $40, that's probably not enough money to make it worthwhile. Uh, I did the math at 0.67 grams in the 3 kilograms of material that we smelted. That ends up being about 220 grams per metric ton, or about 7.5 grams per ton. So my question to you guys is, if 7.5 ounces a ton isn't worth it at $40 or whatever, how much do you think you need to make it worth it? So do you need twice as much? Do you need five times as much? Is it a dollar amount that you need? So leave me a comment below in the comment section and let me know what you guys think it would be worth your time. All the energy, the, the crucibles, the, the fuel, everything, and three and a half hours worth of work. How much money do you guys think you need to make? So let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.